Hey, I'm Jan. And I'm Ivan. Do you want to see how we make manufacturing smart? And how we bring OT, IT and data science together? Then come with us. Industrial IoT offers new levels of predictability for industrial enterprises. Most manufacturers lack real-time visibility in machines, assets and factory operations. Instead of spending quality time in strategizing for better output based on predictions, most managers spend time reacting to situations, finding root causes and offering retrospection. Predictive quality is used to spot and remediate quality issues quickly. Generated insights can be used to optimize outputs based on environmental factors and supply chain inputs. The goal is to identify everything impacting final product quality by creating a prediction model that can be used to define concrete improvement steps. AWS services are key to these solutions because they power machine communications, edge and cloud processing, machine learning, and many other critical tasks. Hey. I'm Jan Metzner. I'm a Specialist Solutions Architect for Manufacturing here at AWS. Hi, I'm Ivan and I'm a Senior Solutions Architect with AWS. I'm almost eight years with the company and I've seen a lot of customers building amazing solutions. Very agile and scalable. Why am I standing here? Because I've been working with manufacturers for half a decade and I've been always trying to help them build the coolest solution possible you can make work in the cloud. With manufacturing customers, we have seen they are struggling a little bit integrating their legacy machines and factories into the IT side as well. I want to talk to you about bringing people together and bringing technology together. When I say bringing people together, I mean that we bring operational technology and IT into the same solution so they can bring in both of their skill sets. At the same time, I'm also talking about connecting the traditional shop floor with the cloud. And again, looking after best of breed and finding the optimal solution which you can use by combining the core competencies the two of them can bring. And finally, we want to make sure that we introduce new personas into the mix. Uh, coming from manufacturing, everybody knows well that in order to build a really good machine, you have a lot of different skills you need to leverage. When it comes to a good IT solution, the same applies. And we want to show you how you can integrate these different skills from different people into a holistic solution, which really touches upon the shop floor as well as the cloud. So why are we building this? Because we want to introduce transparency and connectivity into processes, into existing processes, if you look at something like a retrofit use case, or to build connectivity in from the beginning into a new line, which you would manufacturing. And we want to make things much more interchangeable and flexible. We want people to have confidence that they can update and modify the way something is being produced continuously and not just configure it once and basically keep it running as is until it reaches end of life. We want to demonstrate what data-driven manufacturing really means by showing what kind of data and information you can extract and how we would use it in a sample case which we will introduce to you later. And as I already mentioned before, a really good solution is an interdisciplinary exercise. So what we want to do is we want to show you how we can integrate different types of personas and skill sets into a manufacturing line so that ultimately the solution is stronger, it's more creative, and it has a much more diverse set of skills which are sort of making it benefit from it. So how and what are we actually talking about, right? Because I keep talking in abstract terms and I want to be making it a little bit more concrete. So what we did is, first of all, we got ourselves a bunch of industrial hardware. So we have an industrial camera, we have a proper industrial engraver, we have industrial robots, properly sealed industrial PCs. And with that, we build a demonstrator which is engraving luggage tags. So I'm talking the little things which you would attach to your suitcase which have your name on it. And you can make sure that if a suitcase is maybe lost, it will be brought back to you because they found the identity on the luggage tag. So um, what is it first and almost? We have an integrated manufacturing process, which is starting out in the cloud, but which is making its way into the shop floor where the actual tags are being engraved, quality checked, and then returned to the one who is ordering them. We integrated machine learning with a predictive quality component Again, bringing in the data science skills, which I was talking about before. 
And we wanted to make sure it's really a best of breed solution. So what we do is we have a hybrid event-driven architecture, which makes sure that things happen exactly at the moment when they're being triggered, and then we don't waste our idle resources in the meantime. Hey guys, so you have seen the physical setup. So let's look really into the architecture, how that works. So what we see here is the physical um, hardware. So we have the robots, the engraver and the camera, and we have the cloud. So let, let's see how that works together. First thing is that we need to have an industrial PC which runs AWS IoT Greengrass. So let's, let's draw this one. So this is a physical PC and it has AWS IoT Greengrass. Inside, we have actually an abstraction layer. So AWS IoT Greengrass, we have, have an abstraction layer that is standardizing the different machineries. And this is with Lambda functions abstracting the different machines. Then we have um, the logic itself, which is expressed in Lambda functions. So this is the logic. And this is more or less controlling what should be done at which point in time. So now let's look at the camera itself because it's even cooler. Because this one has a PC built in. So we can run AWS IoT Greengrass inside the camera. So let's draw this here as well. We have Greengrass installed here. So AWS IoT Greengrass. And we have the same abstraction layer, which we have here as well. And it's included here in order to get access to, um, to the images. And then obviously we are running the machine learning model. So we have the machine learning model deployed inside Greengrass and it's doing the prediction. So how does that now work towards the cloud itself? Well, the first thing is we need to have a bi-directional communication, both between the uh, standardization components, so we have a communication layer here, but also to the cloud. So the entry gate to the cloud is AWS IoT Core. AWS IoT Core, which is the entry gate to the cloud for devices. And those devices are communicating with AWS IoT Core. So furthermore, we are gathering a lot of sensor data. And all of that is actually streamed to the cloud. So we have here a stream manager. And this one is streaming the sensor data to the AWS IoT Sidewise backend. AWS IoT Sidewise. And this one is streaming all the sensor data into this backend. And last but not least, we have all the images. So that's why we have here a data processing piece. And this one is uploading the data to our Amazon S3 service. So it's uploading the images here that are captured. And we see later on why we do that. So we have already transported everything to the cloud. So let's see how this thing works in the cloud. Sure thing. 
Good, Jan, thank you very much. You already talked us through what happens on the shop floor side. We have our first bits and pieces of the persistence layer. And now what we would like to add is actually the people interacting with the system and the logic which needs to happen in order to make all of this work together. So first of all, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add one persona, which is gonna be our operations manager. So this person, simplified with ops, would like to have a dashboard of what is actually happening on the shop floor. It doesn't need to be just in the shop floor. He can consume it anywhere he wants. And in order to do this, we're gonna piggyback on a native functionality of AWS IoT Sidewise, and that is dashboarding. So what he does is he can configure to his own liking exactly the kind of metrics he will see on the dashboard or maybe even compute new metrics such as OEE or anything else which is relevant to this particular line of operations. Now that we have the ops manager happy, the next person who's coming into play is gonna be somebody who's actually placing the order. So we said we're gonna engrave luggage tags. A luggage tag needs to be requested and we're going to simplify this with orders. In order to choose and request a luggage tag, the first thing we want is we want to have some sort of UI, a pretty website or anything of sorts, which really simplifies the ordering process. So what we have is a website where somebody is going to be able to really create the card, which is going to be engraved with all the information which needs to be happening here. And we're using one particular service, namely AWS AppSync, to make all of this happen. So if we have AWS AppSync here, in fact, it exposes a GraphQL interface, which makes interactions between the ordering process and the backend possible. That is also a two-way chain. And we're using, in order to persist the orders, Amazon DynamoDB, which is a key value persistence store, which is gonna be carrying and storing all the orders. Amazon. Dynamo DB. So what is actually happening is AppSync is going to be placing their orders. And we're using a very nice native functionality since we're talking about event-driven architectures. And when you have an entry created in a DynamoDB table, you can automatically trigger an event. And we're going to use that event to use a so-called Lambda function, which Jan already mentioned before, which will automatically execute when the order comes in, and it will push this order to IoT Core. So here we have Lambda function with the order. And the cool piece of functionality is that once an order actually reaches the uh, on-premise environment or the shop floor, it will persist there regardless of what happens with the connectivity. And here we have a good example of how a hybrid architecture can actually work. So we already added a couple of the typical roles which are actually involved in this kind of design. Let me fix this line a little bit. So the next thing we need to do is we have kind of an end user functionality, but we said that there were gonna be much more people and personas involved in the design. Uh, so the typical persona which we would see next and we would like to introduce is the actual developer. So developers are the ones who are making all the custom interactions happening on the IoT green grass side. So if we have our dev here, he wants to be developing at his own convenience. And what we do is we're letting him do that with AWS serverless application model, just shortly abbreviated with SAM. Sam lets him work locally on his laptop and in the end actually develop and create the deployments which are gonna be ending up on the Greengrass devices. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a direct line going from Sam to IoT Core. And this is gonna be the deployment. So all the changes which are happening on the code side here will automatically appear in terms of behavior on the shop floor. And finally, to make things complete, we still have an industrial camera which needs to have machine learning running onto it. And machine learning is done by data scientists. So we're gonna have our final persona, which is gonna be 
the data scientist. And that person is going to be using Amazon SageMaker. Amazon SageMaker is our ML suite with a range of different services which allow you to do anything from pre-processing of data, labeling and annotation, and finally also training and deploying on all the resulting models. So when we have SageMaker here, we can directly deploy the resulting model onto the shop floor and straight into the Greengrass core running there. So what we're going to do is we have a straight line going here all the way into the camera. And this is a machine learning deployment. So all the pictures will be processed in the camera itself. However, the results will be exchanged locally as well as sent back to the cloud. And there's one final last piece to make this whole because we have the different interactions and the personas playing with it. And we have center stage three different persistent services. And what we want to do is we actually want to group them into one larger concept, which is essentially what we would call a data lake. So this data lake is the foundation for this entire architecture. It has both unstructured as well as structured data, the right persistence layer fit for purpose for the different challenges of the application. And it can be the foundation for a much larger industrial application set. And if you look at it all together, you have both the shop floor, the cloud side, and the different personas interacting with it, all together making up one complete and integrated solution for manufacturing. Thank you. So you see how easy it is to build such an architecture. So go and build it yourself. Modernize your manufacturing operations with the Connected Factory solution on EWS to liberate locked industrial data. Industrial companies can digitize processes, transform business models, and improve performance and productivity while decreasing waste. EWS and our IoT partners can quickly drive production solutions and proof of value deployments in your plants to accelerate your Industry 4.0 journey and achieve business outcomes like predictive maintenance, predictive quality, and remote asset management. Get started on your journey to optimize operations, reduce the infrastructure heavy lifting, and unlock the value trapped in your data. Contact us today.